Hi everyone! Welcome to week six of Opera Makers. Today, composer Chris Thornborough is going to tell you all about the technique of word painting. You'll even get to compose together. Don't forget, we love to hear from you. Share your creations with us online with the permission of your parent or guardian on social media by tagging us at Canadian Opera and using the hashtag Opera Makers. You could win a pair of tickets to a 2021 production of your choice, you guys. There's a new winner every week. All right, are you ready for some word painting? Let's go. Hi, my name is Chris Thornborough and I'm a composer. Uh, that means I get to write music for instrumentalists and vocalists, uh, and they perform that music in concert halls, sometimes in the movies, and in the theater. Uh, I've even written operas for young people like you to sing, which is really exciting. Today, we are going to write a song together. Uh, and while we're doing that, we're going to learn about something called word painting. But first, we need to know what is word painting. So I'm going to ask you, what is it? Well. Word painting is a way to uh, reflect the actions or the mood or the emotions that a song is about so that uh, an audience that's listening to the, to the song will have a better understanding of the meaning of the words. Um, and composers use word painting all the time in opera, so I think we should learn a little bit about it. Uh, I'm going to give you some examples of word painting. Uh, let's start off with um, two scales that we can use to portray different emotions. One scale I'm sure you know very, very well, it's the major scale. It's the one that you sing Do, Re, Mi on, right? Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. Major scale is used often to portray a happy mood. So this song, Happy Birthday, for example, is set on the major scale. Happy Birthday. Actually, if it is your birthday today, happy birthday. Um, I can change the notes in that scale to be a minor scale, which is going to have a very different feel to it. And I want you to think about what that emotion is. So this is the scale. Oops. Try it again. So for me, I think the minor scale in this particular example that I played might portray the emotion of sadness or sorrow. Single tear. Um, maybe we want to set a scene. So let's say you and I are writing an opera together and we have gotten the words to a scene that takes place in the middle of a thunderstorm. Kind of scary, right? I don't know if you've ever been in the middle of a thunderstorm, but they can be pretty loud. Now, if I'm writing the music for a thunderstorm, I'm allowed to do some pretty experimental stuff. For example, I could maybe play a whole cluster of notes in the bottom end of the keyboard, just like when you're a little kid learning the piano for the first time, it was really fun to kind of smash on the keyboard. I'm gonna do that on the low end of the keyboard here to create the sound of thunder. Kind of scary, right? Maybe we're writing a different scene now in this opera and it takes place in the forest on a bright sunny day. And what do we hear in a forest on a bright sunny day? Well, probably the sounds of robins and chickadees and sparrows singing joyfully in the trees. So I might uh, write a completely different melody than the thunder that I just did to evoke those sounds of nature. And that is word painting. <laughs> Kind of cool, right? Um, maybe I want to portray the actions in a scene. So let's say we're doing a, an opera now where there's a big race. Well, I might choose to, uh, a tempo uh, and some harmonies and really fast notes to portray the sound of a race. <laughs> Playing fast, uh, playing energetically, that actually paints the picture in your mind of a race. Um, 
let's say we're now doing a scene where there's kind of a sneaky, nefarious uh, person who is sneaking into someone's house or maybe hiding somewhere where they shouldn't be. Maybe they're sneaking up the stairs. I'm gonna use some short, uh, quiet little notes to portray that. And you probably will recognize what I'm doing here if you've ever watched any cartoons where someone's kind of sneaking down the hall. Sneaking. Okay, so I think we have a better understanding of what word painting is. Now let's see if we can apply that to a song. Shall we get started? Let's do it. So I've actually prepared some lyrics for you about one of my good friends, Rusty. Rusty happens to be a puppy. He's my parents' dog and he's absolutely adorable. And I thought it might be fun to write a simple song about uh, his shenanigans. So these are the words that we are going to set. You ready? So Rusty was a puppy who was always super hungry. He couldn't wait for dinner such a long, long time. So he snuck downstairs to find himself a snack, step by step, step by step, down the stairs. Rusty's tummy grumbled. Rusty's tummy growled. When suddenly he spotted his human friend eating a sandwich. So Rusty licked his chops and he began to drool. What would he do? What? would he do? Kind of a fun little song that we're going to do here. Uh, let's see how we can word paint that. So the first thing uh, we should do is set the mood. Now this song is about a puppy. Puppies make me pretty happy. I think this should be a happy song even though he's probably going to get it into a little bit of trouble because he seems to want to eat that sandwich. So I chose a major key for this song. Uh, just like the happy birthday song, all the notes of a major scale. Uh, and my first little mel melody goes like this. Uh, and we sing the words. Rusty was a puppy who was always super hungry. I'm going to add a little harmony to that to really flesh out the idea that this is a happy song. You'll notice that all of these chords have a kind of happy sound to them. Rusty was a puppy who was always super hungry. Now, what's the word painting that's happening here? Well, there's two things happening. First thing is that it's set in a major key, which creates a happy sound. Um, it's relatively quick, which kind of gives it a little more energy. But I want you to listen to the shape of the melody and see if it reminds you of how puppies behave when they're kind of wide awake. They're kind of like bouncy, right? Notice how the notes go up and down and up and down. It's the same motion of a puppy that's kind of jumping around and playing around. Let's try singing it together. So I'm going to sing it once, and then you can try singing it with me. Rusty was a puppy who was always super hungry. Try it with me now. Rusty was a puppy who was always super hungry. Pretty cute. Okay. So now the next line is, he couldn't wait for dinner such a long, long time. Now there's a word in there that you hear twice that we can really use to word paint. And that word is long. How can we word paint using the word long? Well, I think we can be really literal. We can actually stretch that note out for a long, long time. Let's see how that works out. So the melody goes like this. He couldn't wait for dinner such a long, long time. Okay, I'm gonna add in a little more harmony there just so you can hear it one more time and you can really hear like, yeah, that is a long time, the way I'm holding that note. Uh, what I actually put on those notes is something called a uh, fermata. So maybe some of the older uh, opera singers who are watching this video know what that is. A fermata in music is something that makes you have to pause on a note for a little while. Get it? Pause, puppy? Eh, anyway. He couldn't wait for dinner such a long, long time with that melody. 
He couldn't wait for dinner such a long, long time. Okay, let's put those melodies together from the top. Uh, I'll sing it once, and then you can try singing it back with me. Rusty was a puppy who was always super hungry. He couldn't wait for dinner such a long, long time. Try singing it with me now. Rusty was a puppy who was always super hungry. He couldn't wait for dinner such a long, Okay, so you remember in the first part of this video, we talked about the, the action of sneaking. Do you remember what we did to create sneaking sounds? We used staccatos, which are short notes, to portray the idea of sneaking. Now, Rusty is kind of a sneaky dog, so we're gonna write a little sneaky passage where he sneaks or snuck or sneaks, I don't know how you say it, down the stairs. Uh, the actual lyrics are, so he snuck downstairs to find himself a snack. You're gonna sh sing short notes while I play these short notes. The melody goes like this. So he snuck downstairs to find himself a snack. Let's add the next part too. Step by step, step by step, down the stairs. Now that melody is kind of going in this kind of motion and we're talking about going down the stairs. What kind of word painting is happening there? Well, we have notes that are kind of portraying the, the action of going down the stairs. Let's try singing that one more time and then we'll add in the harmony. This is a sneaky going down the stairs passage and the music is painting that by going in a downwards motion and by uh, using short notes to portray the idea of sneaking. It goes like this. So he snuck down stairs to find himself a snack. Step by step, step by step, down the stairs. It's kind of funny to sing it that way too. It's like, you know, we like to sing these long lines and I think it's sometimes funny to, you know, I'm gonna sing short notes instead. Um, all right, let's try singing it with the harmony now. So he snuck down stairs to find himself a snack. Step by step, step by step, down the stairs. Okay, so I use kind of high notes there. We're now going to move to a, a, yet a different emotion and try to portray that. And that's one of Rusty being really hungry. Now. If you've ever been really hungry, and I think everyone has at one point or another, I'm really hungry right now, uh, our stomachs rumble on growl, and it's kind of this low sound. And I wanna do that in the keyboard. Now it's not as rumbly as the thunder that we talked about earlier. Maybe it's a little higher up here, uh, maybe in this range. But we're gonna kind of use these notes to portray the idea of a rumbling tummy. Uh, so the words are, Rusty's tummy rumbled, Rusty's tummy growled. And rumbling sounds are kind of close together. Like, blah, 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 blah. gross, right? Uh, we're gonna put the notes really close together as well to show that Rusty's tummy is rumbling. So it sounds like this. Rusty's tummy rumbled and Rusty's tummy growled. That's a really low note. Uh, if you can't sing that note, you can just sing a little bit higher. Rusty's tummy growled. We can sing a little bit higher if it's too low for you. Uh, and when we sing those low, close together notes like that, we get this idea of, yeah, he's got a really grumbly tummy. And I'm gonna reinforce that with some rumbling sounds in my, in my low notes here. So it's gonna sound like this. Rusty's tummy grumbled and Rusty's tummy Right? Rumbly and crunchy. Um, the next part, I thought we would 
Let me ask you this. For those of you who have a puppy, who have a friend who have a puppy, what happens when a puppy sees its human friends or the, the owners of the puppy? They get super excited. Puppies look at their owners uh, sometimes like they're their heroes. So I thought we could use some heroic music to portray that. So we do it kind of like this. When suddenly he spotted his human friend. And I'm gonna set that with uh, heroic harmonies like from a, a superhero movie. So. When suddenly he spotted his human friend. But then he notices his friend is eating a sandwich. Eating a sandwich. And since Rusty is really hungry, and his friend is eating a sandwich, Rusty thinks he should get a sandwich too, right? Um, let's try singing that. When suddenly he spotted his human friend eating a sandwich. And you can hear that shift of emotion from loving his human friend, but wanting his sandwich so bad. Uh, and so we're using harmony and melody and different uh, uh, energy of notes, so really heroic notes, to portray the best friend, and then thinner sort of staccato -y notes for eating a sandwich. Let's try singing it one more time. When suddenly he spotted his human friend eating a sandwich, and then we're going to get back to that rumbly kind of uh, gurgling stomach thing because we're going to be talking about hunger again. And Rusty licked his chops and he began to drool. I'm going to make the note a little longer to portray the drooling. And then uh, our final line. What should he do now? What should he do? And we've created this song. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do before we move on to the next part is just play you back uh, the whole song, and we can sing this together. Rusty was a puppy who was always super hungry. He couldn't wait for dinner such a So he snuck downstairs to find himself a snack. Step by step, step by step, down the stairs. And Rusty's tummy rumbled, and Rusty's tummy growled. When suddenly he spotted his human Rusty licked his chops, and he began to drool. What should he do now? What should he do? What should he do? I think for this last part, I'm going to leave it up to you. I'd like you to finish this song by word painting this line. And the line is, he leapt in the air and grabbed the sandwich and ate it in one gulp. So there's actually three lines there. He leapt in the air and grabbed the sandwich and ate it in one gulp. And see if you can word paint the final lines for this song. Thank you very much for listening and being with me today to write a song together. I am so excited about uh, students and children making opera, and I hope that you enjoy the rest of the series. Take care. Bye.